Hey friends, today we have a fun thrift haul and we are going to do a few projects together. Shopping this week was a little bit sporadic. I went to go pick up my paycheck from the antique mall that I have my booth at. And so I've got an uh, online sale, antique store haul, and garage sale. All right, let's start with the stuff from the antique mall. First up, this was 50% off originally $8, so I got it for four. It is a nice heavy enamel strainer it does have some rust on it so i would not recommend it for food use but it is going to make a gorgeous decor piece i paid six dollars on the copper oval container paid up a little bit for it but it's a beautiful piece of copper it's got some great patina down in the inside a fun little segment of some tape with some old writing on it i can tell it used to say topeka but that's all I can see. Um, but you know what? The reason I grabbed it is because I found these old um, House of Lloyd coasters in the dollar bin. And they fit in here perfectly. $6 on this was paying up just a little bit. But I'm actually going to keep this one for my private collection. Um, but I'll have another set of these coasters listed. I'll get them taken apart and cleaned up. So these came out of the dollar bin. And this was $6. How cute and cottage core is that? And just in case you're new here, all of the products and my flips can be found over on my website, upcycledbybree.com. But I always link everything down below in the description box as well. For $8, I found this copper pitcher. This is just a beautiful copper piece. I thought the shape was super unique and it's hammered. It's got the good detail and a couple of spots. And then that handle is just beautiful. So not only is it copper, you've got the mixed metal. I don't want to keep it. See, I'm doing brass right now though. And it's like, I just don't have room to display it right now. And I hate to buy things and just shove them instantly into a storage. So I'll probably go ahead and list it. I don't know. We'll think. I'll think on it. Okay, so this booth was 80% off. They had this marked at $45. I didn't even bother taking the time to look it up because I was it was 80% off. So it came uh, down to uh, $9. $9 after the discount, which isn't bad for this huge, really tall umbrella stand. The uh, scenery on it is not my normal decor. But I still thought it was really cool. How fun would this look in a cute little cottagey farmhouse foyer or uh, mudroom with your umbrellas. You could put baseball bats in here. Um, you could put canes in here. You could put floral in here. <laughs> um, and, you know, this would look really cool painted. I'm not going to paint it. But if you buy it... If you buy it, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, I am going to look this up uh, and just see what the resale on it was. There's a little sharp spot there. I'll fix that. Um, and I'll pop that up on the screen here somewhere for you. But it was cool. It was a huge piece of uh, brass, so I grabbed it. It's got some really fun patina down around the bottom of it, too. dollars vintage teleflora um, 1984 white coffee pot with blue uh, it's not stamped but 
uh, the blue writing and then the copper top. There's a little, there's a few little spots of patina on the top and like a, one little dent right there. That ring light makes it kind of hard to see. Um, but it, it doesn't matter. It's just adorable. The inside of the lid, is, it looks like a stainless steel. So this is probably copper plated or whatever, but it's clean. And this is clean too. I think you could definitely still use this. But not only is it the teapot for $10, four of the cups. It's like, how am I, I want to keep it all. I don't have any room for all of this. I found some really good junk this week. So this, um, oh, this little cup comes out. done that it grossed me out <laughs> never had a set of three I've had singles before brass coils and two of them are felted the felt's different so I don't think they probably weren't like an original original set they probably got pieced back together over time So here are the items that I have polished up just a little bit. I didn't try to get them perfect, but I did give them a nice cleaning. I found another set of the Brass Swans. Can y'all believe it? Same vendor, same booth, um, same price. They were $20 each. I have them listed up on my site at $119.95. So the first set sold in a day. We will see what happens with this set. Okay, this piece I'm keeping for myself. It would be really hard to ship. And I've got a ton of little ones already. He's got one little chippy here on his beak that I saw and I just didn't care. Of course, $7.50 for this big old duck. And he's great. Just a white duck. Look at his little fancy tail feathers too. I thought that was fun. His feet are just mostly painted on. There's like a little bit of texture where the toes are, claws or whatever those are called on a duck. But he's just cute. I'll, sh I'll insert a little picture here of some of the other ducks I have, but I thought he would fit right in. He'll probably be an indoor duck. He's uh, ceramic. Um, well, it looks like he was made in 1982. So for being 82 and being so large, only having that one little chip is not bad. late in the season probably to be buying rabbits but y'all I could not find any this year these were $2.50 each um and I was thinking this one's awfully cute this one's gonna get some paint for sure it does have a nice felted bottom so I will try to paint around that um no markings on either of them but this one looks pretty vintage this one maybe not so much this guy was only a dollar just looks so actually chocolatey real I couldn't resist his little like ears for a little frosting, like icing, even looks like little icing. So he was a dollar for the chocolate bunny. Okay, are these guys I'm keeping. April of 1982, SJ are the initials. <laughs> you got a sleeping one, a little crouching one, and a standing one. And they're so cute. The big dark eyes are slightly creepy, but the sleeping one sets it off, right? Like, oh, we're just sweet. <laughs> How cute. I'll find a place to stick these before the season is over and stage them up a little bit and, and they'll stay with me, I'm sure, for several years to come. <laughs> I did paint a couple of the bunnies with the baking soda paint method to cement them. Leave me a comment below. Do you think that's an improvement from the faux chocolate look? I 
hit up the dollar box in my favorite booth, of course, like I always do. I've been finding lots of these little uh, clothespin recipe card holders. I believe this one is a duck. He's got some fun little, um, they're, I think they're upholstery tack eyeballs. Some nice wood grain, great color. I'll just clean him up, sell him as is. You just stick your little recipe in there and he holds it for you while you're cooking. <laughs> this seashell trivet was $1. And yes, of course, trivet if you would like, but I'm thinking boho basket wall decor. This giant brass holder goblet thing. Oh, it was from Crystals here in Topeka, Kansas at one point, which is no longer open. Um, anyways, $4 on this, and this is just going to be beautifully staged up with some greenery flowing. Maybe some short spindles sticking out of it would be cute. What would you put inside of something like this? I need some new fresh ideas. Leave me a comment down below. But $4 for this big old hunk of brass I thought was a good deal. thing from the antique store is this little bag and I haven't even opened it yet I just saw it and I grabbed it because of one piece which was the chihuahua Maisie oh my gosh oh wow <laughs> it looks just like you <laughs> y'all know I love my critters I don't I don't find many uh, cute vintage chihuahuas. Okay, so the rest of this. <laughs> yes. The rest of this is a set, I do believe. Department, $1. Oh my gosh. You guys, their faces. Okay, so Camel's cool. He's chilling. Zebra. <laughs> Zebra's just hanging out. Looks kind of mad. What's up with the goat? <laughs> I love him. And Mr. Gator is kind of silly too. <laughs> you guys, this is why I love junk. So I grabbed the dollar bag of animals for the chihuahuas, but I will sell the little farm animals probably as a set. It looks like they were all purchased for a dollar somewhere at one point in time <laughs> when i was on my way home there's a garage sale gentleman over here in the neighborhood has them frequently so i need to really um drive a different direction this is a nice solid circular basket look at the sturdy wood that's down inside of it like this guy is is solid so i thought this would make a really pretty onion grass sea grass interesting um I thought this would make a really pretty like uh lavender basket something a little bit different or of course just by itself this is a beautiful beautiful boho basket it would make a really good statement piece we'll do something fun on it milk chocolate oreos were inside no longer interesting Let's grab some decoupage paper and put on the top of this cheese box. This is the JRV Monochromatic and I have used a lot of it but there is a bit left with the butterfly. I'm going to trace around my lid and cut it out. The JRV decoupage papers are 18 pound papers, which just refers to the thickness. They are thick enough to not fall apart, but not so thick that you can't work with them easily. I'm using DIY liquid patina as my decoupage medium. I'll pour a little bit out into this cup and use a sponge brush to apply a thin layer to the lid. Once that thin layer is applied, I will lay my paper down. Notice I don't quite get it where I want it the first time and I am able to move it a little bit, get it exactly where I want it, and then I smooth it from the middle towards the edges. I don't mind having a little bit of wrinkles in my paper, but there are methods you can use to get the wrinkles out more effectively if you don't like that look. I prefer the wrinkles because if you go back with a little sandpaper over the top of them, it gives it a beautiful distressed look. 
I'm just touching up around the edges where I didn't get quite enough of the liquid patina. Once I have it down, I take another thin coat over the top of the paper and let it dry completely for several hours. I don't worry about a perfect cut when I'm cutting the paper because I like to take sandpaper around the edge, which gives me a nice clean tear right around the circle. Then to give it an authentic look like it's been on here forever, I am sanding right down the middle of that little crack that's on the top of the cheese box. And that's all there is to it. A light sanding over the whole paper gives it that distressed finish. And here is a look at the final product. What do you think? Such a simple, beautiful makeover. And then I just love to the um, shape of this basket. Don't love the color. So we're going to try the oven cleaner um, stripping method on this basket and a couple of other ones. I'm using the Easy Off. This is the Fume Free. I'm outside using it. I still like to wear some face covering. This stuff is stinky and just be extra careful. Wear gloves if you want to save your hands. Be smart. I put a couple of thick coats on and let it sit for several hours and then I take it out front here with my hose and scrub it off with a scrub brush and spray it down with the jet. I'm cutting the handle off of this basket and you can see on this basket especially all of the colors that it had before and afterwards it really does give it a beautiful bleached basket appearance. I did let them set in the sun and dry for several hours and here is a peek afterwards you can see those colors are gone. Now this blanket basket post has sold already y'all. It went in like 10 minutes but I promise I will make more as I get more posts. And here is a peek at the other basket, beautiful lightened wood. This one will be up for grabs on my site with the cute little added handles. Just a great faux gathering basket for spring. What do y'all think? Have you tried the oven cleaner stripping method yet? Leave me a comment below. I don't so much like it for wood projects, but I do love it on these baskets. If you're digging the video so far, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you could share this video out with a friend, that's going to help my YouTube channel continue to grow, which will help me bring you even more amazing content. These set of two urns were $5 for the set. They are ceramic. Um, and it looks like somebody painted them white. We're going to do something a little more fun with them, though. I want these urns to look like they've been sitting out in the garden forever. I'm using a DIY letterpress gray and painting that on with a Klingon F30 brush. If y'all haven't tried these Klingon brushes yet, you're missing out. Took me a while to invest in good brushes, but they're a game changer. The synthetic bristle is really good about minimizing brush strokes and they're super easy to clean. If you stick them in a cup of water overnight, the paint virtually falls out on its own. I do end up applying two good coats of paint inside and out and notice with this clay based paint, it does dry a lot lighter than it appears when wet. Using DIY clear wax to seal it up, it is a buttery soft wax, which makes it really easy to apply. When I apply that wax, it will darken back up. No worries, as it, it dries, it will lighten back up to more of that dry color paint. So have no fear. You can see the difference between the wet and the dry wax. Now I'm going in and applying some white wax with a chip brush, more of a whitewashing effect here. This is going to make it look like a cemented urn. And then for a special extra touch, I am going in with some of the DIY shipwrecked wax. It is a teal tinted wax. Again, still buttery soft and really easy to apply, but it is just a gorgeous color and it gives that natural vertigree appearance that happens over time. It works really well with the pennies from heaven copper patina too. Now I'm just really cramming it down into all the little crevices and the details and then wiping it back with a towel, removing the excess. And notice as I wipe back all of these waxes, I'm not pulling any of the paint off. So have no fear. I know sometimes people get worried when they're waxing their painted pieces because a more liquidy wax tends to pull the paint. 
don't worry, your DIY wax will not do that. So on the right side, you have your teal waxed piece. On the left is just the white wax. Which one do y'all prefer? Leave me a comment below. I know that verdigris wax is not for everybody, but I love the final look. And here's a peek. These urns are listed on my site, sold individually. Here we have got a fun, substantial wood piece. Now, if you saw this, you might overlook it because of the outdated words and the hearts, but look. Easy peasy, that's gonna come off. We're gonna remove the excess stuff, uh, clean up this wood, maybe do a stencil or some decoupage on the front. I have an idea. Um, and then restage this, and this is gonna have a whole brand new look to it, but it's really cute. It's like old cheese board turned into a little display holder. It said country china, so I imagine they used it as like a plate holder um, or something like that. A country china, it's a paper plate holder. That's what we call our paper plates here in the Midwest, our country china. Paper plate holder, pinko. <laughs> Using a multi-tool and a hammer, I just simply knocked off the old words but I think this piece sat in front of a window or something and was sun bleached. You can see the bottom there, that piece of wood is a lot lighter and the shadow of these words or engraving or whatever here, they just would not come off no matter how I sanded. I ended up using my orbital and everything. Couldn't get them off, so I kind of rerouted. We are going to darken this piece up instead. I grabbed my Sweet Pickens Dark Oil Wax and started to apply it to the front of this piece. To no avail. Look at that. Country China is popping right back through again. <sighs> so I did two coats of the oil wax. No luck there. And then I grabbed my DIY decrepit dust. This stuff is a lifesaver. It is a powder decrepit dust, which actually just makes your pieces look even older and more patinaed. So I rubbed that down into the light spots and just started working it around down into that oil wax. After I played around with it a little bit, I got those words covered, but now that front piece was way too dark. So I did the same process over the whole entire piece, and it actually gave it a beautiful old wood effect, and the words country china are no longer. Now this piece will hang or sit, it would be great for your paper plates, or 100% beautiful for decor as well. I love these. I might have to keep these little vintage uh, fry spoons. Two of them tied together, I believe, were a buck. Those would be just so cute hanging off of one of those like little accordion hangers in the kitchen or staged up in a crock with some wood spoons as well. These are just little wood blocks that were painted to look like books. Nothing fancy. Um, but I thought they would be really cute on a tiered tray. Of more cottagey items, these are hand painted um, and in decent condition, the wood's kind of beat up. So I was thinking I would try to just clean the wood up a little bit and salvage that beautiful hand painted flower job that they've done. And there's a pair, so that always is nice. How pretty are those colors? Well, pink kind of goes with what I've got going on. <laughs> All right, super cute calendar. It's got the apples on it. I'm going to see if I can't bust those off. Not right here, but I will do it outside. We'll put something new up there, and then all the little pieces are in there with the months. Uh, pretty classic, the type and everything on them. So just get rid of those apples, and that will modernize that, but keep it super country, vintagey, cute. The same method I did on the cheese box, I added some of that same monochromatic decoupage paper to the top. This is one of the flower sections. And again, it just gives it a more modern touch, but I left the adorable little hand-painted holiday pieces. I love baskets, I love baskets, I love baskets. One. It's got a little bit of depth to it. Great patina. Two. It's got a fun shape and weave. Oh, this these are a set of two, which makes them even cuter. 
This is just one of those paper plate holders, but it's dyed green and I thought that would be really fun on a boho basket wall. School books um, have been doing really well for resale for me. People are commenting, oh my gosh, that was the book I used when I was in school. Um, and it's bringing back some really awesome memories for people and they're grabbing them, them up. Even if you weren't so interested in the content matter on them, you can always flip them around and then you get just that little pop of blue, that little pop of brown and that beautiful vintage paper. Thanks for coming along to check out my thrift haul and doing a few projects with me today. I always have so much fun on these thrift haul videos. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye friends.